So guess what? You know how the pipelines, uh, they want to build pipelines on Native American lands and they pipelines always uh, spill and then they contaminate the groundwater. And then, uh, so there was that big thing in Dapple, remember a couple years ago, they were all going, well, the pipeline companies paid $8.6 million for police to arrest protesters. So the pipeline companies, well, breaking pipeline company Enbridge spent almost $10 million to buy off Minnesota police forces who arrested hundreds of indigenous peoples at line three who gave the fossil fuel industry the right to buy public cops. Dozens of line three protesters in Minnesota still facing criminal prosecution. Enbridge funded public safety account paid $8.6 million for policing line three construction. The two activists were making their stand for the environment, latching themselves together inside one of the large pipes during construction of the Line 3 oil pipeline in Minnesota. Prosecutors say that they were doing that, they, in July 21, was criminal. What they were doing was criminal, even beyond what's typically charged after civil disobedience. St. Olaf College student Madeline Bayazi and Amory Lee Zhu of Michigan were both charged with one count of felony aiding attempted suicide, each others. They also face charges of felony obstruction of legal process and gross misdemeanor trespass on critical public service facilities. I mean, imagine if they just would have ordered a torture program to cover up an illegal war that killed a million people. They'd have none of this. <laughs> Canadian tar sands oil has been flowing for nearly a year now through Enbridge Energy's pipeline, and the law enforcement teams in riot gear are long gone. The charges against the two are among the approximately 200 criminal cases still open from the long series of Line 3 protests, one of the largest environmental actions in Minnesota history. Nearly 800 of several thousand demonstrators were charged with crimes most of them stemming from protests during last year's construction. The pros prosecutions jammed county courthouses in northern Minnesota. Calgary-based Enbridge Energy argued that the old Line 3 needed to be replaced because it was crumbling. Opponents have fought it as a threat to land and water subject to Ojibwe tr treaty rights and a driver of climate change. Minneapolis civil rights lawyer Jordan Kushner said this is the first time he's seen civil disobedience protesters charged with felony theft or with aiding assisted suicide. So what this means is that they're getting serious. You are not going to be allowed to protest in America. You are going to be considered a felon. Do you look what they did when Amy Goodman went to DAPL? They charged her as a terrorist. So all they have to do is say you're an environmental terrorist, and then they can lock you up in jail without charging you forever <laughs> if you think about all the arguments about being soft on crime or like remember in the riots and they're like they yeah. just let the people out meanwhile and these are natives yeah no one cares you don't hear the story they're gonna just abuse the law to do whatever they want and then you'll have a bunch of dumb democ like patting themselves on the back because they don't dress up like them for halloween have no idea what they're doing to these people's land and and like yeah you it's think, unbelievable you, you yeah uh, Kushner is representing Basie and Kurovo. They were arrested on a hot July day last year in Verndon Township after crawling some 250 feet into a pipe that was closed on one end and secured themselves together inside. A volunteer firefighter strapped on an oxygen tank and crawled in after them with a rope. He testified he thought they were close to heat stroke, but they refused to come out, saying they were prepared to die to protect the water. The Atkin County Sheriff's Dan Guida went in and tied a rope to one protester with just minutes left on Goyden's oxygen tank. All three were pulled out together like a big plug. Now, did the two people he was saving have oxygen tanks or just the firemen have an oxygen tank? Because it seems like he could have gotten by without his oxygen tank if they did. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> okay. According to Marla Markham, director of the nonprofit Climate Disobedience Center, the criminal case against an estimated 800 protesters include about 95 felony charges, mostly felony theft related to demonstrators chaining themselves to equipment. Markham called the numbers conservative. Well, so they do care about that property damage, That's don't they? That's right. 
The State Public Utilities Commission created an Enbridge-funded account so that taxpayers did not have to foot the law enforcement bill. You have got to be fucking kidding me. Well, we live in the 1890s again. (laughs) They got the company cops. So in total, those cops weren't working for the citizens. They were working directly for a private oil company from another country. They shouldn't have been allowed to wear their badges then if they were doing that. I agree. Because on Sasha's show, the cops weren't allowed to wear a badge when we hired them. That's right. They shouldn't have been allowed. Yeah. Most of the payments went to law enforcement agencies, state records show, although the single largest recipient was the Department, the State Department of Natural Resources, which was reimbursed over $2.1 million. The account has been attacked by Line 3 opponents for creating an incentive for law enforcement to crack down harder on demonstrators. It's pretty disturbing when you have law enforcement working for a private corporation and furthering their agenda. The fund was set up with clear guidelines to reimburse agencies for personal expenses and protective gear, but not for other equipment such as tear gas or other crowd dispersal tools. Porta potties and handcuffs were approved. At least 10 police agencies in Minnesota took huge money from Enbridge to target indigenous peoples peacefully protesting the company's pipeline. About 200 of those arrested still face criminal charges one year later. That was excellent reporting at the Star Tribune and this guy named J.B. Horace. Uh, 10 police forces were bought. So that's all the police force. That's how much money they got. So that's called... I don't I know this term is overused a lot, but that's called fascism. <laughs> that's what fascism is. I know it's funny, but that's what it is. When a, you have a private corporation hiring law enforcement from the government to do their bidding. Are you sure, Jimmy? I thought it was if you didn't think that Biden's uh, red light speech was good. That makes you a fascist? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was. Yeah, I thought you were trending for fascism. Uh, so that's the world we're living in today you're being ruled by corporations and the people who are in power in government are just their puppets and their tools and if you think there's a bit of fucking difference between the democrats and the republicans when it comes to anything regarding your life you're a chump well you know the democrats will do a land acknowledgement before they round up the natives yes unfairly yeah. uh, beat you know <laughs> the democrats will put on kente cloth and kneel yeah. with black lives matters protesters and then give two billion dollars to the cops <laughs> yeah hey come catch one of our live stand-up shows we'll be in spokane tacoma virginia beach richmond arlington san jose miami west palm beach go to jimmydorkcomedy.com for a link for all the tickets and become a premium member while you're there <laughs> 